A beautiful night in the Steel City for our national championship match. The Division III season starts with 414 schools, and we are down to our final two. The Juniata Eagles and the Trinity Tigers at gorgeous UPMC Cooper Fieldhouse here in Pittsburgh. Get a look at our bracket to figure out exactly how we got to this championship match. We had some really impressive matches and frankly some really, really talented teams. We've only had one three-set match all week. Certainly anticipate that this national championship game will feature some more drama. Hi, everybody. Welcome courtside, and thanks for joining us here on NCAA.com. Alongside Laura Benton, I'm Brendan Gulick, and we are really excited for what we think is going to be a heck of a national title match. It's a rematch. You don't get too many national championship games that are actually a rematch from earlier in the season, way back in the middle of September. It happens to be the only loss that Juniata suffered all season. They went 33-1 up until this point. Trinity got the better of them on a day where the Eagles weren't their best. But both these teams feel like that was ancient history ago. Yeah, and so much has occurred since September. But both of these teams are the best of the best tonight. They're both illustrating how well balanced they are, but they're each going to showcase their specialties. Trinity, huge block. They have such a blocking presence. And then Juniata, they are serving the heck out of the ball right now. Yeah, 25 aces through two games, pretty darn good. We've got seven All-Americans between these two teams and they've certainly played up to those distinctions throughout the course of the year. Let's talk about the Trinity Tigers and their incredible journey this year. 30 and four, they're the number six ranked team in the country, and they went unbeaten in the Southern Collegiate Athletic Conference. It's the 15th time they've done that since joining the league back in 1991. They lost in their conference tournament, so they don't have a crazy long winning streak, but they've won 16 of their last 17 games, and they certainly come in with a whole bunch of momentum. They do, and every play, everybody that they've played along the way are huge programs. And blocking, mentioned earlier, is their game. They have a strong right side presence with Sarah Willingly, balanced attack, pen to pen, and All-American Emily Ellis in the middle. On the flip side, the Juniata Eagles, gosh, you know, it, it's hard to really say for sure what program is the measuring stick. But Juniata is in that conversation. 33 and one this year, 26 wins in a row. I mentioned the only time that they lost was back in mid-September. This is their 27th appearance in at least the national semifinals in 41 NCAA tournaments. It's crazy how regular they've been in this setting, and yet they've only got two national titles. They definitely are the standard of Division Three volleyball. They're led tonight by first team All-American, Mackenzie Coley. Olivia Foley setting the offense and watch out for the Coley-Foley dynamic duo. And then both teams, you know, really the key tonight is both teams are so well balanced that what is going to be that one thing that sep separates them? Is it the blocking that Trinity has demonstrated or is it the serving in which Juniata has just been able to go on a roll with? Juniata out of the Landmark Conference in 41 years as an NCAA program. They've won 41 conference championships. They've never lost in their league the last 15 years. They've played in the Landmark about three and a half hours from here. Trinity Tigers from San Antonio, Texas. Trinity playing in its second all-time national championship match. They were the runner-up in 1999. The Eagles won in 04 and in 06. They were runner-up most recently in 2009, also in the first tournament, 1981, a few in the 90s, 93, 96, 97, and they were national runner-up as well in 2005. Just about ready for a ceremonial opening serve, which should be a lot of fun. It's kind of cool, the number of people that have made their way out here. Great scene. <laughs> oh, I love it. How fun. And in a moment of such tension and, and such excitement building up for these two teams, really cool to see all those young women with that kind of uh, moment to have a big smile and watch a cool moment. But both of these teams have demonstrated throughout this tournament how relaxed they come into the match and how prepared they are coming into a match. So these first few points, I'm sure, are going to be testing the ability to relax and focus in the match. Starting lineups coming shortly, our umpires. 
The up ref is Julie Vokey. Patty Rolf, the down referee. Our replay official today, Brianna Spain. Christy Altop and Barry Zafrin are the line judges. Congratulations to our officials on their appointment for uh, the opportunity to work this national championship match as well. Sixth all-time NCAA tournament meeting between two of the great programs in the history of Division III Volleyball. National championship match underway, and it begins as it so often has for Juniata this tournament on ace. Sydney Hole, so far the Eagles, 25 aces in two matches, and they have only played eight sets so far in the tournament as well. And it is so hard to start a match off knowing you have to defend such a team with great serving. Good attack from Watley on the near side. Now Lily Padolin, who had the semifinal clinching point on the right pin. Juniata in white, Trinity in black. Tell you the rest of the starters here in just a moment as Watley attacks again. Kennedy Christie hits it over, and Juniata scores twice. It's Christie, Mackenzie Coley, Olivia Foley, Sydney Ole, Lily Padolin, Courtney Williams, and the libero number seven for Juniata is Kiona Sky, Rousset Hernandez. For the Trinity Tigers, Marissa Amarino. Jenna Rodriguez is their libero in the white jersey. A couple of All-Americans in Sarah Flynn and Emily Ellis. Maddie Fate having a great tournament, wears number four for the Tigers. Mackenzie Logan and Reagan Watley, their starting lineups. Well, the Eagles are just so good at putting pressure on teams. They're a very disciplined volleyball team. Everything they do, there's just discipline about them. And the way they attack the ball, the way they set up their block, the way they serve, and a little bit of demonstration of that so far by the Eagles. Both coaches preached patience when we spoke with them throughout the course of uh, the last couple of days. They said, look, we know we're going to take some blows along the way, playing a really high caliber opponent. And we're going to have to figure out a way to weather the storm a little bit when things don't go exactly the way you want to. A lot of that patience, too, is as a hitter, you have to be patient. You're going against a really good block. You have to find ways to score. And it's, sometimes it's hitting high hands off of the block, maybe tipping, put it in a different place of the court. It isn't always about power. Padolin tried to drive one down. Now Flynn hits the uh, antenna. And Juniata's off to a good start here in the first set, 4-1. Set Hernandez. Flynn blocked. Coley and the Eagles racing out 5 1. Mackenzie Coley going up for the strong block in the middle. Watch her, first team All American, and she is a really strong blocker up there. Head coach Heather Pavlik told us that. Coley is regularly competing against Power Five Conference players in open gym in her own time. She said, look, she's very capable of playing at an extremely high level. Great kill, Emily Ellis. That's going to be a fun match when those two are against each other right in the middle there. Yeah, the game of volleyball is made up of all matchups. Who do you want blocking? Who do you want your hitters going against? And this Ellis Coley matchup is going to be a great one as both are first team All Americans. Coley roasting one down, and the Tigers a bit on their heels here early on. Olivia Foley is the setter for the Eagles, and she has demonstrated just how well she can disperse her offense of getting her hitters one-on-one, -on -one, getting them to an angle in which they'll be successful. And that McKenzie Foley duo is really good. Good diving effort from McKenna Walker, but a better kill. McKenzie Logan puts it down as we get some substitutions. Changes with Trinity Herrera and Brett Thornton. I beg your pardon, Sarah Williamy coming on for the very first time. Williamy has been unbelievable so far here in Pittsburgh. Yeah, the right side presence that she brings to the court. She's consistent. She does a nice job hitting high hands.
Christie fights right through the block, scores for Juniata. We had an opportunity to talk about each of the players today, and Kennedy Christie, one of them, and one of the descriptions that was given about her is fierce, and she just goes after that ball. Everything she does, she is fierce. Watley sends it over. Foley across the way. Good swing. Audrey Muth had a great semifinal. Should be the terminal. This time it's for Coley who finds the floor. Well, this will be key for Trinity. What adjustments are they going to make to try and control Mackenzie Foley while she is up in the front row? Couple of aces early on for Juniata, and right now they are certainly showing they're ready for this moment. Timeout, Trinity. The Tigers find themselves down 9-3 early in the match. Got some work to do here, but certainly not something they won't be able to come back from early on here in the first set. In the meantime, let's talk about these two coaches here real quick. Want to give them the appropriate time and attention. On the Trinity side, you've got one of the all-time great coaches in Julie Jenkins, 38th year, 1,049 victories. 429 losses. She is uh, a wonderful woman. She is fierce. She's extremely competitive, <laughs> but she's got a warmth about her that is so genuine. Had a great conversation with her. She's pretty excited to be wearing that maroon blazer. Yeah, so she has packed that blazer each year and that Trinity Tigers have made the championships and she packs it away for a championship and she hasn't been able to wear it. And so it was really heartwarming to hear that tonight she was going to get to wear her maroon blazer that she's been carrying for the last three years. On the flip side, Heather Pavlik, she is as synonymous with Juniata Volleyball as her predecessor, Larry Bach, was. Boy, serve-receive, a real issue right now for Trinity as Kennedy Christie serves up the third ace already for Juniata. Well, tough serving is always hard to handle if your serve-receive's not able to get the ball up to the setter to run the offense, but when the not even an option, which is what an ace creates, makes it even more difficult. A little too deep there. First error from behind the service line makes it 10-4. Heather Pavlik has built a pretty impressive program of her own after taking over for her former coach, Larry Bach, who in 34 seasons put together one of the all-time great resumes. 34 years for Coach Bach at Juniata, but 41 years uh, overall because he spent some time at the U.S. Naval Academy at the end of his career. And Coach Bach won nearly 1,400 games, second all-time behind Division II Peggy Martin at Spring Hill, who just lost yesterday in the opening round of the tournament to uh, University of Tampa in their regional opener. But Coach Pavlik, in her 12th season, she's got a record of 310 and 68. It's an 820 winning percentage, fourth among active Division III coaches. She's looking for her first national championship as the head of the program. Trinity scores a couple consecutive points here. It's now 10-6. Another good hit for Muth. Muth Audrey Muth, a freshman from Portsmouth, Virginia. Yeah, and Muth has just been so strong. We saw it in the semifinal game where she was dominant on the outside. There wasn't a ball that she was not able to get through. A really tough Northwestern block. Good job out of system to kind of get rolling again. 
That works out well for Muth, despite the fact the block was there from both Fate and William E. A lot of times the ball is just hit so hard that the block's not able to push through all the way over, and that side, the ball's coming back on Trinity. Just barely out of bounds, 12-7. Mentioned it's the sixth all-time NCAA tournament meeting between these two teams. But they've played 20 times as they play each other a lot. I think both programs have done a really good job with their scheduling philosophy. They want to make sure they're well-tested because they know what it takes to make a deep run in a tournament, even though for Trinity they haven't actually won a national championship yet. They've been such a part of the national tournament now with four appearances in the national semis the last eight trips that they've had and all of them have come consecutively now the last three NCAA tournaments 19 uh, 21 and 22 as Courtney Williams scores and then of course back in 1999 as well yeah Muth on the outside there's just one on one and being able to score in the middle of the court making it really hard to defend when a hitter is going against a solo block Juniata three and two, their record these two teams played in 2019, and Trinity won in straight sets in the regional semifinals as Muth delivers a great block, and Juniata feeling a lot of momentum here early on. A lot of the momentum has come from the blocking and hitting game, and right now that's a good matchup with William E on the right side, Muth on the left, both really impressive hitters, but now their blocking is being tested. Watley had it deflected out. I uh, beg your pardon, it was not deflected. She missed it. So stays with Juniata, my mistake. Three straight points for the Eagles. Foley keeps it going. We'll step aside briefly. You're watching live streaming coverage from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania of the Division Three National Championship match. Down deep after a frustrating beginning of this national championship match. I think they probably feel like they're not playing up to their potential right now, but I'm not sure that it's about nerves. Both these two teams are pretty darn good about carrying themselves with great confidence. And I think both coaches have made it a point to tell their teams, look, sometimes you got to figure out how to, to fake it a little bit and tell yourselves that when things aren't going well, that just slow the game down and let it happen. That was a crafty little play, though, from Foley. <laughs> Foley recognizing she's the second contact, recognizing that Trinity is a little scattered, hadn't transitioned back to their defensive spot. And when she contacts that ball, she just sends it to the deep left back corner. Wow. This first set is becoming an avalanche. Juniata running away with it right now, 18-8. Well, it is tough when you are going against a super strong serving team, and that's what Trinity has right now. They have to find a way to side out. Six unanswered points. But Juniata gives it back. Yeah, net violation up at the net trying to block that ball. So Marissa Amarino. Back into the game, and she'll go behind the service line. Trinity with wins in this national tournament that have really been impressive. Maybe their best win, frankly, came before they got to Pittsburgh as Trinity stuffs Padolan. They opened with a straight sets win over Puget Sound, and then in three, knocked off the Chicago Maroons. You get another look here at a great block. But Trinity in the regional final had a five-set thriller over the only team left at all levels of NCAA volleyball that had not yet been beaten. As Courtney Williams has called for the lift. They knocked off Claremont Mud Scripps in the regional final in five sets. That was the second time this year that they had beaten the number one ranked team in the country. The first time was back early in the season when they beat Wisconsin-Eau Claire who is the defending national champion.
Trinity serves here. Once the Tigers got to Pittsburgh, they opened the tournament with a three-set win over the MIT Engineers, who I thought played great volleyball, but Trinity was just a little better that night. And then the Tigers got a, a heck of a close in the fourth set to make it a four-set win over the Violets from NYU on Thursday. I thought NYU played their hearts out. As Jimmy Ada scores again, it's 20 to 11. Courtney Williams out of the middle. It's just being able to find the spots that are open. Right now, Trinity exposing themselves just a little bit in the middle and just some communication breakdowns. But serve receive is just so key right now. They have to be able to get a perfect pass, be able to side out. If not, just win some balls in transition. Well, good job from Foley to make the effort on it, but Trinity gets the point. 20 to 12. Juniata hosted the regional. They beat Keene State, SUNY Cortland, the Red Dragons, and Christopher Newport, the captains in the regional final. Punching their ticket here where they were the number one seed in this year's tournament once everything was reseeded. Not out by much. And uh, <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Oh, that's good. I wonder how much, uh, how much pull Mark Pavlik has with his wife, Heather, <laughs> the head men's volleyball coach at Penn State, the husband to Heather Pavlik, is sitting in the stands, and he clearly stood up and, and signaled to his wife, well, along with a few people down there, <laughs> threw his arm up in the air as if to say, pull your challenge card. And he made the signal for... You should review that. Uh, maybe she just didn't see him. But I'm sure he's going to let her know about it. Yeah, a little added <laughs> assistance if she had only seen it. Uh, those two are uh, fantastic coaches. They're so supportive of one another. And actually, Larry Bach was not just Heather's coach and mentor, but friend to the point and friend to Mark to the point that he was the best man in their wedding which I think is really cool. And both Mark Pavlik and Larry Bach are here tonight sitting uh, pretty much right next to each other in the section right behind where this service is coming from. 21-14. Juniata in control here early. Sarah Flynn tried to drive it down and a net violation on the Juniata Eagles. A lot of times those net violations coming from just trying to be aggressive with the block, and we actually have not seen the Eagles get many calls in the net. Some of that's just eager to block. Padolin couldn't work out for her that time. So Trinity hanging tough after a couple of errors. And a timeout called by Coach Pavlik. Juniata swinging 250. Trinity only hitting 096 early on. But the Tigers are hanging around here late in this first set. Back to the bracket for just a second. I was referencing Juniata as the number one seed in the tournament. They beat Hope, the Flying Dutch, in the national quarterfinal match. And frankly, that was as fun a match as we've seen at all this entire week because it felt like when Hope's back was against the wall, they were having more and more fun. <laughs> And Juniata struggled to put them away until finally Hope just ran out of gas there in the fourth. Yeah, the Eagles just flex their muscles a little bit against Hope. But you're right, the body language and the amount of energy that the Flying Dutch brought to the match was something to witness for sure. Then in the semifinal, Juniata beat the University of Northwestern from up in St. Paul, Minnesota. They hammered them in the first set, stumbled a bit in the second, destroyed the Eagles from Northwestern in the third set and then hung on in a competitive fourth set and knocked Northwestern out of national championship contention as well. Juniata led in the semifinal by Padolin, 15 kills. Muth had 10, Kennedy Christie had nine. They had 16 aces in that Division Three national final four game. Pretty cool. Out of the timeout. Wow, is that any good from Foley or what? Gave Christie a chance. 
Eagles reset. Kennedy gets a better look and capitalizes. How good is Olivia Foley? <laughs> she does a marvelous job of putting the ball in the right place, but Christy over here, man, Trinity did not give her much line, and she found a way to stay on the inside between the antenna and the block to get the kill. Flynn. Little setter's dump. Watley ready for it. Oh, boy. Watley puts it over. Scrambling back defensively as Christie strikes. Rodriguez a sweet dig. And Jenna sends over the roll shot. Christie again, she's really feeling it from that far pin. And Juniata takes advantage. Such a great demonstration of patience up at the net. Foley trusting her outside hitter, Kennedy Christie, to just keep swinging, keep swinging, and eventually the advantage is with the hitter. That'll give Trinity a chance to take a deep breath. Mackenzie Logan, been really impressed with the way she's performed here this week. Herrera. Back into the game. With Fate, Williamy, and Logan all up front. Who's going to step up here for the Tigers? Coley can't score. So try again. Set behind her a bit. Looking for a chance to really drive one down. First team All-American, Mackenzie Coley doesn't miss many of those. Set point, Juniata. A balance of going behind the setter, behind Foley to try and get a kill by Coley, and then bringing her back in front. That's what makes Coley just in a phenomenal middle and hard to beat. Juniata takes the first set from the Trinity Tigers, 25-17. Those Eagles have only dropped 15 sets all season in 34 matches. Now their 35th match tonight. And five of those came on September 16th when they had a five-set win followed by the four-set loss to these Tigers. And we talked with Coach Pavlik about that day, and she said, you know, it's just a little different. We flew in the night before. And oftentimes when you're going to fly somewhere, you go maybe even a, a day before that. She said, we, we just didn't look like ourselves. I don't know if it was a rest thing or a rhythm thing, but one of those days you say, hey, whatever, behind us, moving on. Yeah, and what did you learn from that? That was one thing that I really appreciated in that conversation. She talked about either you win or you learn from it, and that included the loss to Trinity. Tigers. See what kind of response they can have here early in the second set after falling behind 9-3 in the first one. Good start. Watley stuffs her. Great block by Trinity. We talked about how strong their blocking is. They've had 16 blocks, no, excuse me, 20 blocks so far in this tournament, and Maddie Fate being part of those, even though Watley was involved in that one. Good find in the back corner. Looked for a while like it might cut its way out of bounds, but Kennedy Christie ties it up. Both of these teams are so well balanced, whether it's been on the pin hitters, but throughout the tournament, there's always been a different player each night that has shined for their team or been able to step up. And that that is what makes this match so special, even though, you know, it seemed like the Eagles were really coming out strong, but right now Trinity's the one that's putting the pressure on. Well, Trinity right now I think needs to lean hard on their best players. When you feel a little adversity, you're playing in a match like this, you're looking to your All-Americans to try to carry you a bit. Ellis and Flynn up front at the moment. Ellis tipped that one over, but couldn't jump up quickly enough to block Coley's attack. The rest of the defense responded as Rodriguez slipped in the back. Hope she's all right. Couldn't tell if she was grimacing or smiling there. <laughs> There's some pretty happy young lady anyways. Yeah, Eagle fans kind of giving her a hard time on that 
Tripod. <laughs> that could be some of it. Tell you what, the student section here today, pretty impressive. Ah. It's actually spilling across multiple sections. Flynn. Oh, my goodness. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. Foley with the backhand dub. And really, that puts Trinity in a position where they have to make decisions. They have Coley in the front row right now. Do you double block her? If you do that, then that leaves Foley open. Not the ball down yet. Is still in play. Great defense. Flynn into the net. So with that commitment with the blocking, that creates opportunities for a setter to be able to dump. And so it's kind of the give and take of the blocking scheme. Who are you going to commit to? Who are you going to try and get the ball to as we get part of the action here? It's part of the courtside seat, right? <laughs> Want to be right in on things. What a drive. I'll tell you what, Kennedy Christie is having the match of her life right now. She is. Uh, she is just pounding away on the outside. Taking advantage of one-on-one. -on -one. You can go line when you're one-on-one, -on -one, or you can take all that court and just drive it in the cross court, and that's exactly what she did. Six kills for Christie already. 5-3. Now Fate comes back in for Trinity. Good back set, great block. Foley in front of her. Christie rolls one over into a tough spot. Kennedy another chance, and Flynn blocks it down. Says it's out of play, and it's a Juniata point. So far, Trinity really demonstrating the patience that the Eagles are going to have to use against such a strong block. We didn't see so much of that in set one with Trinity but now getting their blocking game more involved. Another chance for Logan, and scores. Changes here as Herrera and William E. come back in. You know, I realize this is a neutral site, and it's predetermined years in advance. But because Juniata happens to be only 120 miles away, they've traveled so well. They brought a band. I mentioned the student section's been great. It's pretty amazing to me how well they have played at home over the years. And I think it's a huge advantage for Juniata tonight that this feels like a home environment. A lot of that dealing with the tradition that Juniata brings to the environment. And it's an interesting thing when you talk about tradition because it's certainly there, but a lot of it was a long time ago. And that's not to say that Juniata hasn't been good recently. They sure have been. But the complete and total domination that they had in the 90s and early 2000s has tapered off just a little bit. They have the all-time NCAA record for consecutive conference match wins. This is completely mind-blowing. I, I had to check this in three <laughs> different places to make sure I wasn't misreading this. They won 369 conference games in a row from 1981 to 2017. The next closest in Division Three, Wash U won 146 in a row. And all, uh, across all divisions of the NCAA, Wheeling in Division Two had won 219 conference games in a row. I, I have a hard time believing that that record is ever going to be broken. I mean, that's it's completely ridiculous. But they've done so well at home. They have the second longest home court winning streak ever at 65 matches from 1994 to 1998. And in particular, over the last 15 years in the landmark, <laughs> they've lost twice. That's it. They've only lost 49 home matches in the 40, 45th year of their program history. They literally don't lose when they play in Huntington. That's just amazing. I love that. A few of those wins coming from Courtney Williams as we see a middle attack one-on-one -on -one again against the Trinity Tigers. And the fact that Huntington is you know, a smaller town where 
Look, Junie out of volleyball is it's the hottest thing smoking in town, right? I mean, that is the ticket. And so it's cool because this is not an unusual sight for them. It's You can feel the hype, you can feel the energy, but they're used to playing in front of uh, a group of well-educated and, and fun fans who know when they've got a good team to cheer for. Well, there is a difference between traveling and being home and being able to play, but, yes, yeah, just the knowledge of the fans, too, helps. Great kill for Trinity, 10-6. Tigers are faring better here in the beginning of the second set than they did in the first. They trail one set to none. Setting up for Muth. Good try. Herrera now across court. Watley. Reset Hernandez for Audrey again. Good block. Padolan content to send it over and they'll play defense. Williamy a bit off balance. Juniata right now just wearing down Trinity. They're playing well on the attack, on defense. When serving, when receiving, there's no weak spot right now. Yeah, and Trinity's doing their best to be able to try and make rallies go longer and use their defense to help with that. But yeah, right now, the Eagles have really controlled the tempo of the match. Foley in front of her. Eagle students having some fun, realizing they're up on the video board as they uh, welcome their team back on the floor. Still fairly early in the second set. You joined us a little bit late. Alongside Laura Benton, I'm Brendan Gulick. We're at UPMC Cooper Fieldhouse at Duquesne University, neutral site for our Division III National Tournament this year. Reset Hernandez behind her. Oh, boy. Watley get it over. Boy, Trinity is just out of sync right now. They've got to find a way to get in a better rhythm. Well, in that rally alone, going pen to pen, the Eagles starting on the outside, then going to the right side, then back out to the middle, and then finishing the play on the outside. And just a really good demonstration of how well they use pen to pen all the way. Good diving effort. Christie again. Everything about Trinity right now feels reactionary. I mean, Juniata from every spot on the floor. This is a landslide at the moment, 14-6. Well, Padolin was the kill leader in the semifinal game. She, along with McKenzie, or excuse me, uh, Muth and Courtney William. So then you look at Candy Christie having the night she's having. They just have so many weapons right now that can step up. Padolin's trying to get going, and she scores there. That'll get Lily back to a zero hit percentage, three kills, three errors. But to your point, Christie swinging 533, Coley swinging 500, and Muth is swinging 385, and all three of those young ladies do not have an attack error, not one. Another time out on the floor here, it's 15-6, and we'll keep it here for a second. So if you're Trinity, I mean, I, I feel like there is an element of you need to, to figure out a way to get control of this game 
and, and that can't always just be based on the score. You've got to do some things that feel normal, right? To, right, to feel like you're in a better normal place. Yeah, going back to the basics. What got you here? Okay, your blocking got you here. Have we done, have we made the adjustments? Have we made the right commitments when we're trying to block? But right now, the Eagles would be very difficult to try and make adjustments against because of what you mentioned earlier is all three of those hitters, anyone can go, can put the ball down. So then your defense, well, it becomes very difficult on your defense to try and close gaps when a block isn't able to get all the way out to the pin because they've made different adjustments. And so there's just a lot happening. Um, and really the first thing that Trinity can do is side out and get that first ball kill, get themselves back to the serving line. And uh, that's, that's where they need to be. Juniata has 28 kills. Trinity is 13. Tigers are swinging under 100. Attack percentage for Juniata, 385 for the match. Wow. 15-6, second set. Eagles trying to keep it going. Foley behind her, where Padolan rockets down another one. Well, Padolan is dangerous one-on-one, -on -one, and that's exactly what she was, and able to put that ball in the middle of the court. Watley rejected. Courtney Williams there this time. She and Padolan impenetrable. Yeah, this block setting up doubled. See how much time the block has right now for the Eagles to get set up. And a lot of that has to do with the serve receive. The passing has to be better so that the Eagles have to make decisions on where they're going to go. An example right here, this is a one option pass. Very predictable. The ball is going to go out to the outside. And then the transition kill. 7 nothing run. And if you want to take it deeper than that, it's a 12 to 2 advantage for Juniata. This national championship match could not be going any better for the Eagles at the moment. And so Trinity turns to one of its younger players, freshman outside hitter Hallie Martin from Little Rock, Arkansas. We saw Hallie come in in the semifinal after she did not appear in the quarterfinal. And I thought she gave Trinity a good little boost on Thursday. See if she can do the same here. She did. She came right in. She got a kill on her first swing on the outside. I think it's worth pointing out as Trinity scores there. Coach Jenkins was not really sure how this year was going to look, even as, as early as just, you know, six months ago, because last year's team was so senior heavy. And Sarah Flynn, Sarah Williamy, Emily Ellis all said, look, we're, we're not going to come back and play our fifth, uh, our fifth year of eligibility until they lost to Calvin in the quarterfinal last year and said, eh, no, this, this is not how we're going out. And they decided pretty late in the game, you know what, we want to come back and, and try to make a run at a national championship. And that gave Julie Jenkins uh, a, a better base to work from because this is already a young team with some of the critical terrific All-Americans they lost last year. And so I think it, it speaks to the, the bright future for this, uh, for this Trinity side while recognizing that they needed some of these pieces to get here. Yeah, and it gave a good light to just see how competitive they were and how she could make adjustments and be able to challenge them each day that they were in the gym. Kiona Sky, Rousset Hernandez. Second team All-American from Rio Grande in Puerto Rico. Dumps it over, nobody home! Jenkins was questioning whether or not the, the libero, Rousset Hernandez, uh, had, was in front of the 10-foot line, so she needed to be below the height of the net when being able to set the ball. But it was ruled she was below the high of the net. Back row attack. It's a good idea, but 
Didn't work out the way Nadia Kern en envisioned. Jenna Rodriguez, as the point goes to Juniata, Jenna Rodriguez obviously the libero, but the thought coming into the season was that Kern might have to be the libero, but the freshman Rodriguez emerged as a really good option early on, and it's turned out to be a great thing for Coach Jenkins. She's won 1,049 matches. So I'm going to trust her gut when she's trying to figure out <laughs> how Absolutely. to put all the puzzle pieces together. <laughs> she's been around and seen, been able to make the correct changes in the past. Good job from Foley and Christy there just to keep it going. Flynn scores. Good shot. I don't know about you, but right now I, I look at the way Juniata is playing. And it's easy for casual fans not to understand the physicality and the power of the game when you have two teams that are literally on the opposite sides of the net. But the physicality in particular from Juniata stands out to me right now. They are a dominating presence as Coley steps into another one. Yeah, and that's All-American, first team All-American going against first team All-American on the block. And you're absolutely right. They are just banging away and being able to put the ball and get kills when they need it. 25-17 the first set. It's 23-9 in the second. Christy. Rodriguez for Flynn. Good find. Sarah scores twice. Yeah, that was a good swing by Flynn. Recognizing the block is taking most of her angle away, so she swings high, able to hit the deep corner in the right back. Amarino across the floor. Logan with a softer hit. Foley tried to dump it. It's worked a couple times for her. Good read from Walker. Ohl said, don't touch it. And it's 24-10. Set point for the Eagles, who are hitting 368. 34 kills, only six errors. Rare mistake from behind the service line. Josie Dayer on the floor for the very first time this national championship tournament. Freshman from Houston, Texas. Goes behind the service line. Coley cracks it down and Juniata looks surgical as they're trying to win a third national championship in school history. Trinity's not dead, but they got a long way to go against what feels like an unstoppable performance from the number two team in the country through two. 25-17, 25-11. It is all Eagles here in Pittsburgh tonight. Trinity down two sets to none. They've got a great support system, including that young lady right there. Morgan Anderson is in the white hat and uh, right in the middle of your picture. She was a first team All-American for Coach Jenkins back in 2002. And she was the club coach for Emily Ellis, who was a first team All-American. And uh, Morgan surprised her uh, by coming to support her tonight here. Morgan, of course, a Unbelievable player. She was just recently inducted into the Trinity Hall of Fame. Congratulations on a great career and some amazing recognition. I know these young ladies appreciate the support they get from family and friends alike as we start the third set. Could be the decisive one in this national championship. Juniata right now is playing about as well as they could possibly imagine as Lily Padolin scores. They've had six attack errors all night. They're hitting almost 380 and holding this really good Trinity attack to a 066 hit percentage. 
thing that really stands out on the statistics the amount of digs that the Eagles have. They have 40 digs compared to Trinity's 29. And that number really just shows how many opportunities that they're allowing their offense to um, transition again or how much they're challenging the Tigers every time the Tigers try to hit. Little miscommunication there. And it's 1-1. It's been a pretty good time to be a Trinity Tiger of late. Last year, every single one of their athletic programs finished first or second in conference play. Many of them in the NCAA tournament. That one's ruled tipped out of bounds, so it's 2-1. The football team hosted a playoff game today. And so some of their athletic administration is back on campus while others are here supporting the team in Pittsburgh. Athletic department down at Trinity University led by Bob King. He's been in that role for 30 years. Former student athlete himself. Had 17 interceptions. How about that? Played college football back in the 70s. Mr. King was awfully good at Millsaps. As so often is the case, we see lots of Division III athletic directors that were former student athletes themselves. We certainly understand the time commitments that these young men and young women put in. Padolin, another one, three to one. The right side presence of Padolin. The reason she's so hard to defend is even if you have a double block on her, she's going to find the gap in between the block and be able to get a kill. Athletic director for Juniata is Nikki Ayers, who is a young AD and fairly recent grad in uh, the grand scheme of things. 2006, she was a uh, women's soccer player at Juniata, and actually Heather Pavlik told us that she knew of Nikki a lot as, as a student athlete, but has really enjoyed the time that she's gotten to spend with her and as an adult. She's so proud of the way Nikki is leading their department. And Nikki is here, and she's got a big smile on her face right now. As she is uh, probably feeling pretty good about her team's chances to come home with a trophy with the way this thing is going. Ironically, by the way, Nikki Ayers did her master's program here at Duquesne. Kind of a cool little homecoming oh, for her. Oh, yeah. 4-2 here in the third set. I know the, the match right now hasn't necessarily been super competitive on the score line, but I just think it's appropriate for us to underscore that these two programs are the best about what Division Three is all about. These coaches do it right. They care about their kids. They've got incredible student athletes who are in this for the love of the game. There's no athletic scholarships at Division Three. Both coaches said, this is why I love being here, because if the, the, the athletes at any point ever said, you know what, I want to walk away, they can still be at the school they chose to attend. They're certainly talented enough to compete at a high level, and tonight is you know, a, a, a great example of how far they can take their athletic accomplishments. But we have seen throughout the course of this tournament from some student athletes from NYU and Johns Hopkins some incredible academic achievements. And I, I just think that both of these two programs have embraced the Division Three model so much. It's great to see them having success on the floor. Yeah, and one of the things that came out of those conversations with each coach was the confidence that they hope that by the time the player leaves that institution, that they are at their highest confidence and they're ambitious enough and know that when they step outside in the real world, they're going to be successful. It's so cool that athletics can be a vehicle for that kind of stuff because life does move on eventually. As the double hit gives the point to Juniata. And yet, you know, while there is potential professional opportunities to play volleyball for a select few that are good enough, uh, over time, maybe to play overseas. Tonight is, it's the pinnacle. This is the crowning opportunity of your athletic career, especially when you play at Division Three. All of the time, all of the travel, all the financial resources, all the sleepless nights and long road trips and J.O. tournaments, right on down the line. These families have poured in an insane amount of time and energy and investment into these young women. 
And whether you win or lose, you get a chance to play in the NCAA quarterfinals and make your way into a point now where you're playing in a national title match. This is really, really special for a lot of folks. Trinity trying to figure out a way to stay in this thing. Juniata right now looks awfully good. William E with a good kill. A much welcome kill from William E as the right side, again, being able to have that good passing, defending the serve right now being one of the hardest things to do, especially against the Eagles who have spotlighted already their main hitters being able to be pretty successful. Watley looking for the back corner. Ole dug it out nicely. William E. Nope. Kennedy Christie rejected. That was better blocking. Beautiful find. William E. Rockets one down. Boy, did Trinity need that. I did, and every little point is going to help, especially just inching your way back. But William E., she has a really tough assignment out there right now with Coley and Christy uh, going on the double block. So there's some conversation over here on occurring on the court. Oh, they found something on the court. Not sure if it was a piece of tape. Very well could have been. It could have been something that came off of some padding from somebody. Oh, you know what? It looks like it might have been a nail. <laughs> like a somebody break a nail? Artificial like nail, yeah, because their nail's getting <laughs> Maddie Fates getting her nail taped up there on the right side job. of your screen. Blocking and Yep, that's exactly what it was. I hope she doesn't have acrylics on during season. <laughs> as long as they're short. I mean I guess. I, you know, I'm all about, you know, like let's have some fun, <laughs> let's try to look good, but during season of the game you play with your hands? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I'd be hard pressed to want to do that. To each their own. Look good, feel good, play I mean, good. I mean, I buy into that. Don't do it the night before the national championship, <laughs> but if you played with it from the beginning, it could be understandable. I mentioned earlier how good Juniat has been at home. Probably didn't give enough credence to how well Trinity has played at home. They had their 44 match win streak snapped back on October 14th against UC Santa Cruz. They had won 44 straight home games, which was the longest active streak in Division Three and the 11th longest ever. They've been awfully tough down in San Antonio. And of course, that was about a month ago and a month after they beat these Eagles in the middle of September. Coley scores again. Well, those two points there by Trinity were really important because right now the Eagles have been siding out at 83%. So the fact that Trinity can put two points together to one, that's good for them on trying to uh, make this lead a little bit smaller. We didn't hear you wrong. That was 83%, <laughs> right, 83 in the national championship game. Yes. Goodness gracious. Coley. Herrera sets up, another chance for William E. Can't get through Muth and Coley. Talk about a tough block to try and swing through as Muth gets most of the ball for the straight down block. Kennedy Christie. Coley. You know, Mackenzie Coley has played well this week, but in my opinion, it's been the pieces around her that have shined really brightly. But tonight, when Mackenzie's had chances to make a big impact on the game, she absolutely hasn't missed. You're absolutely right about that. And a lot of that has to do with the Coley-Foley combination, but more of just Foley being able to get the ball and just disperse it out correctly. Get set up her hitters to be successful and find that one-on-one -on -one opportunity. And I think the Eagles have done a really good job of making it tough to defend and allowing Coley to really just shine in that moment. So let's talk about this timeout right now by the Eagles, because if you notice, there's 20 
women on the roster for the Eagles. <laughs> that is a huge circle and um, trying to get everybody's attention. And what's interesting is they're all relaxed. And when we talked to Coach Pavlik, she just said, you know what, really in a timeout, I need about 10 seconds to tell them what we need to do. The rest of the time, I want them relaxed. I want them having fun. And that's such an interesting perspective. It is. Somewhere along the way, you know what you need to know. And right now, with the way this match is going, what do you need to say to the coach? Hey, just uh, keep going doing what you're doing because yeah. it looks pretty good right now. Yeah. Meanwhile, Trinity's huddle. They are trying to dig out of a hole that is feeling a lot more like the Grand Canyon. Only down five here in the third. Certainly winnable for them if they can put a comeback together. Christy. Serve received, struggled there. Rodriguez kept it playable, and Kern hit it over. Mackenzie Coley blocked Foley and Rousset Hernandez. From her knees, Foley with a great serve. Muth hit it down. Juniata can do no wrong. We just spotlight Foley from falling down to be able to get the beautiful high set to the outside. Muth crushing it. Watley able to take a deep breath. Yeah, good job by Tigers by staying patient. The transition volleyball, sometimes in transition volleyball, so the rally's continuing. It's really important for the ball to be passed perfectly to the setter to allow more than one hitter to be successful in transition volleyball. You said Hernandez, Foley, and Christie work together. Herrera trying to get them in system. And it works out well for Watley. 12-8. This is as tight as Trinity has been this late in a set all night. A little joust at the net. Herrera for Watley. Gonna have to find a different way to attack. That was a better combination. Emily Ellis smokes one home. Yeah, the Tigers really need Emily Ellis involved in her in their offense as she is really potent in the middle, and she does a really nice job not only blocking, but being able to kill the ball. Good rally back and forth, and Coley... Swung a little awkwardly. Tigers with four straight points since that timeout, prompting Juniata to call for a break. So maybe the first time all evening that Juniata has tripped up just a little bit. And Trinity's got this third set here within two. You've talked all week, Laura, about how the idea of trying to get to 25 points on any set can feel almost overwhelming at times. They're trying to make the game small and digestible. I have to think that's exactly Trinity's focus here because anything beyond that, this is going to get away from them. Right. So if you're, if you're Trinity and you're trying to think, okay, we're down two sets, we got to make all this happen and so much to do, um, you're right, it becomes overwhelming. So breaking the game down into small five points is a good way to do that. Focus on those five. And right now, Trinity has done a really nice job of just playing defense being under control, forcing the hitters from Eagles to have to change the way they're hitting with whether it's like trying to hit high or maybe putting a ball in a more predictable area. Now, given that, one thing the Eagles have done really well tonight has been out of system balls. Even when they're out of system, it looks like they're in system. And so they've made the game of volleyball look really easy tonight. And so as Trinity tries to inch back into this, those small games to five are really important. Let's see how the Tigers respond here. Their first bit of momentum all night. Set up for Watley. Herrera was ready. William E. No. 
Herrera down the middle of the floor, and Ellis couldn't handle it. Chance for Juniata now to bring on Abby Telez, sophomore from Parker, Colorado. Pride of Ponderosa High School playing in the national championship match. Wow, what a tip from Muth. And Audrey tried to kill one off. Good defense. Trinity looks a bit more settled. Starting to find a better rhythm now. William E. saying, this is the time. Let's go right now. It's interesting you bring that up because as the rally was going, it did look like Trinity was just a little more relaxed, ready to play the defense. So, yeah, maybe finding their groove just a little bit later. Well, again, those fifth-year seniors that came back this year because they didn't want their careers to end with a national quarterfinal run when they thought they were capable of more. I have to imagine that there was some gut check time in one of those huddles as if to say, like, hey, look, we've still got a little time to try and make something different, write a different story. That one's tipped out of play. They certainly don't have a lot of time. Juniata potentially 11 points away from a national championship. But Trinity showing good fight here in the third. Watley couldn't score. Great dig, though, from Christie, who right now is playing like the MVP of this match. Watley. Wide of the target. One thing with serving as Foley goes back to serve is just who, who do they want to focus on? Who is a passer that they feel they want to serve to that maybe can direct where the offense is going to go? Ellis, not white. But got it the second time. Well, Ellis being smart, she had tipped the first one and was unsuccessful getting past the block. And that time, power is her friend. And the times we've seen her shine, it isn't necessarily because she's tipping the ball, but being so physical up at the net. Audrey Muth with a big smile on her face, wide open. Yeah, Muth on the right side, all alone to be able to power through. I asked Coach Pavlik how much this team thought about the match from back in September. And it was kind of a, a two-part answer. It was both, hey, you, you know, you'd be silly not to go back and look at the tape and try to figure out if anything is different about the way your opponent's playing now versus two months ago. But skill sets, personnel, like that stuff all stays the same. And, and on one hand, you know, you want to learn from that. On the other hand, you, you kind of don't want to talk much about it. You want to flush it. And she said her team has talked a little bit about it. Obviously, the three seniors on this Juniata team, Reardon and Walker in particular. Don't want to leave out Brianne Carmody, who has not gotten on the floor quite yet. But those three seniors lost to Trinity in the 2019 quarterfinals. And so there's also the idea that they remember what it was like to lose to this team a couple of years ago. And they dropped their only match of the season to the Tigers down in San Antonio back in September. Get a rare opportunity for retribution. 17-14 here in the third. He joined us late. Juniata took the first set 25-17 and the second set 25-11. Number two versus number six nationally. And while they have both had some exceptionally high moments this year, tonight has been all about the Eagles up until this point where Trinity is trying to keep this thing alive and just see if they can sneak out a way to get to four. Down only two here, 17-15. This is a tough front row right now. 
Phillips, Coley's in the middle, Padolin's on the right side, Christie on the left. Well, the Trinity fans didn't like the call, but Juniata was pleased with it. I think there was a question on whether or not the ball had actually crossed the net to be able to go off of Trinity. Good find. 18-16. It was a really good swing by Martin. There wasn't much room to be able to hit that cross-court shot. Ball had some real knuckle to it. Coley a little slower that time. Rodriguez, Willamy kept it alive, and four hits. Well, the Tigers are inching their way back with some serving and some blocking schemes here. They're playing better defense, and they are holding the Eagles below 83% on side out now. <laughs> <laughs> Those two sets were clinical. Now Christie. Another good swing. Coley jousts at the net, beats fate. McKenzie gets it to 19-17. Coach Jenkins having a conversation with down referee Patty Rolf. Not sure if she's going to go grab her challenge card. She is. She will. So the question was around whether or not um, there was interference either with the attack or the net fault or the line underneath the net. But anyway, each coach in this match gets two challenges. Unless the match were to go five, then a coach would get additional challenge. If the coach wins the challenge, then they get to keep the challenge. However, if they lose it, they are down one. The things that can be challenged include a touch, the ball contacting the player, in out, net fault, attack line fault, or a service foot fault. Based on that replay, what do you think? Uh, I'm inclined to say Juniata is going to be happy about the decision. Here. Ah, gotcha. That's my, I didn't get uh, a chance to see the replay. That it's... is my gut feeling, but I'm not paid to be an official, so I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to go out too far of a limb there. You know the the praise for Juniata's program this week. We've certainly tried to document how well they've played, not just this year, but historically. And I think one of the things that's really notable when you're looking at a program that's got over 1,500 victories, the, the winningest program at Division III all time, they're one of only seven programs to never have a losing season since the NCAA instituted volleyball in 1981, across all divisions. Wow. Um, and, and it would have been tied for the longest streak ever, except for the fact they didn't have a season in, in 2020. So technically they're at 41 years where the uh, NCAA record right now is at, at 42 for Calvin. But it, it's it's kind of a, a reminder that, you know, the glory days for Junie out of volleyball, they will say it's, oh, they say four hits? No, they. Oh, they, they awarded the point to Junie yeah. Adam. Okay. Um, you know, Junie out is from, from 1992 when they initiated the ABCA poll for the first time, from 92 to 2010. They never finished a season ranked worse than fourth in the country, never. But since then, they've only had three top five finishes. And one of them was last year. And it's not like the program has taken a nosedive. I think it's more about the fact that the rest of the country, in a lot of ways, is catching up to them. We've had seven different national champions the last seven years. And Juniata playing in their ninth title game this year hasn't even been to the title game since 2009 when they played at John Carroll University in Cleveland. But they've been to the national semifinals 27 times in 41 years. So they've always been close, just haven't been able to get over that hump very much. And I wonder how if a national championship came to fruition for them tonight, how that might 
reinvigorate the uh, the program that already has such high expectations. That one's tipped out, and Juniata leads 20-18. to 18. Well, this is a tough decision for Coach Jenkins because she needs to know if there was a touch because this is her last challenge for the entire match. And um, she has a decision to make. She's going to go ahead and challenge if there was a touch. There was a touch called on Trinity. However, that ball really sailed out. I'm not sure that the Trinity players were up there, but it's hard to tell sometimes. So the line judge signaled no touch, but the up ref who has you know, the, the saying power signaled touch. Mm -hmm. So that's why they made that decision. I'm curious that those two saw things a little differently. Let's see if we can look at it from behind here. Well, the other night uh, when Juniata, as we take a look at whether or not there was a touch, I don't know. It's hard to tell. That ball, it, the ball live looked like it was really going out. But And Ellis turned around and looked at the up ref and said, hey, I, I didn't touch it. But Yeah. Well, the other night we had the luxury <laughs> of Northwestern University playing or St. Paul, Northwestern St. Paul University, was playing Juniata, and they touched the ball three times in that match. And they, their no touch was called, and they went up to the up official and said, hey, I touched that, I touched that. It saved us all from this delay, both sides of the teams, but just the honesty and the sportsmanship of it all was, it was great to see. Yeah, see, to me, that was the bigger story there because the good news is at this level, You've got instant replay available to you. Yes. And it's uh, it's not instituted in the tournament until you get to the national quarterfinals. So, look, you want to get the calls right, and the point is to be able to use the technology to make sure the right decisions are made. Absolutely, yes. And you want to be at this level, and you want to make sure the call's right. You don't want to leave anything out there. But in order to make sure that it's right, it does take some time. And that's part of the game. And sometimes that stoppage can create – Momentum uh, delays that were <laughs> occurring up to that point. So Brianna Spain, our replay official, signals to Patty Rolf that she's made her decision after taking a look. We're about to get an announcement here. Boy, the Eagle fans are having a good time. There's not a whole lot of tension right now among them. And they called a touch. How about that? So they confirm a touch. And it's 20 to 18. Okay, so that takes all of Trinity's challenges away unless they're able to force a fifth set. Coley comes out. Abby Telez returns. Juniata, 25-17, 25-11. Got the lead late in the third set. Watley rips it down. That was a great kill for Watley, just from the fact of being able to side out, get that ball back from the challenge process, get her team going. Trinity trying to pump themselves up a bit. Amarino. Setter's dump works out gorgeous. Everybody got sucked into the middle. They sure did. Fully recognizing double block and just boop, dump it right on over. Twenty-six consecutive victories for the Juniata Eagles after that loss on September sixteenth. Marino sets up Flynn and the All-American refusing to go down without a fight. 
Clinton, great job to split up the Eagles block, making them commit to her now and just bringing that attention. Moose with authority. Olivia Foley's decision as a setter is just amazing. And the fact that she can get Muth one on one, this time one on none, and be able to crush the ball. Another ace. There have only been six undefeated seasons. We get a timeout on the floor. Only six undefeated seasons in the history of Division III volleyball, two of which came in 2020 when teams were playing with abbreviated schedules. The last time a team had an unbeaten season three years ago, the national champion Johns Hopkins went 35-0. Juniata three times has lost just once in a season, 06 when they won it all. 03 and 96, both of which were great seasons but did not ultimately end with national championships. They are just two points away potentially from raising a trophy for the third time. Heather Pavlik looks pretty calm. Well, her team is playing just exceptionally well. Everything in every category for them has been right on cue tonight, especially nothing's better than your team peaking and playing the best in the national championship. And that's really what has been on display this evening with Juniata. Sydney Ole, sophomore from Dallas Town, PA. Good serve on the ground. And we have reached national championship point. Killed off for the Tigers. Rodriguez. Padolin won the semifinal. Blocked out of bounds, the Tigers stave off elimination. How about Sarah Flynn right now? Two kills in a row just to be the dominance, going up big swings. Sometimes players will be a little hesitant. They don't want to swing on game point. Not Sarah Flynn. She is swinging away. Timeout Trinity. The Tigers huddle looks a little more confident than it did earlier in the match, even though they know their backs are against the wall. They've responded to adversity pretty well here these last couple points. Well, defending that serve, but the first contact with that serve can be your best weapon as Trinity has had a lot of aces so far this tournament. They had eight aces, three errors out of 95 attempts. So if they can predict a little bit more on what the Eagles are going to run, which is really tough right now, we've seen Foley and her ability. Not only do you have to pay attention to the front row, but you have to pay attention to Foley because she's made herself very clear that she is willing to dump the ball and get the point and the kill for her team. Twenty-four, twenty-two, Juniata. Trinity has the serve. Still match point. Jenna Rodriguez. 
Foley to the far side, Kennedy Christie denied. Sarah Flynn, it is tipped out. And Trinity stays alive. So not only was there the touch, but again, the Eagles being super aggressive on their block, find themselves in the net. Continues to be championship point. Padolin. Foley for Williams. Rodriguez kept it alive and lands out of play. Not a sliver of a doubt who the best team in Division Three is this year. In straight sets, for the third time in program history, Juniata, the national champions. From start to finish tonight, a completely overwhelming performance. Juniata was unbelievable. Trinity had a heck of a season, and they beat the Eagles two months ago. I know this one's going to sting for a while down in San Antonio. Tigers certainly need to keep their heads held high. But tonight is about the Eagles. 2004, 2006, and now in front of a de facto home crowd, just a couple hours from campus, the 2022 national champions. Well, tonight was perfect volleyball by the Eagles. They used all their weapons, serving, and the ability to control the tempo in each set was what led them to a national championship. There's going to be quite a party in Huntington tonight. I'm sure of that. They could probably hear them all the way here in Pittsburgh. Just amazing the way this team took on the challenge of being the number one seed this week and had to play a Hope team in the national quarterfinals that had, I mean, literally nothing to lose. They did. Hope had pulled off a win over Calvin that many thought would never happen. And Hope gave them such a good run. Yeah, and Juniata found times in this tournament, too, that they were down, and they just worked together. And again, so many weapons. Not one player shines, and if one was down, the other one, another player stepped up, and... Really just a full balanced team this evening. So the Eagles finish the season 34 and one with 27 wins in a row. Trinity falls to 30 and five. They're the national runner up this year. Juniata beat Hope, University of Northwestern and avenged their early season loss to the Tigers with that impressive performance tonight. I, I asked Coach Pavlik leading up to the game how much winning defines success for her. And she said, you know, it's certainly part of it, but I'm so much more interested in figuring out how can our team reach its full potential. You can't always control how good your opponent is. You can't control illnesses. We've been through an awful lot in college athletics and certainly as a world the last couple years. And for so many of us, COVID feels like it's such a long time ago. But a lot of these young ladies had to deal with a lot of uncertainty while they were trying to figure out what college life was going to be like, let alone being a student athlete during some tough times. And Coach Pavlik said, you know, I've tried to check in on my players as often as I can. And the ability to watch them become mature adults full of incredible confidence is the most rewarding part of her job. 
I know how proud she is of this team and how grateful she is for all the work that her staff puts in in order to make this happen. As Lily Padolin was named to the all-tournament team, as was Mackenzie Coley. <laughs> A couple more announcements coming here. Marissa Amarino, all-tournament team. Congratulations to her. Sarah Williamy, quite well deserving after a great week here in Pittsburgh. She was phenomenal throughout the whole tournament, really leading the Tigers and taking oftentimes her team on her shoulders. Olivia Foley, the most outstanding player at the 2022 National Championship. A two-time second team All-American Gosh, did she play her heart out here this week. I was just going to say, how fitting. The setter who set up all the hitters to get all the glory and take kills herself to find and put her team in this position. Final numbers for you while we watch the trophy presentation for the runner-up Tigers. Trinity led tonight by Sarah Flynn, who hit 211 with eight kills and four errors. Five kills apiece for Reagan Watley and Sarah Williamy. Four for Mackenzie Logan. Three for Maddie Fate tonight. Two kills for Allie Martin and one for Marissa Amarino, who had 13 assists, 11 assists for Trinity Herrera. And 52 total digs across the way for Trinity, including 12 from Rodriguez and 11 from Watley. Trinity side outed at 52%. In that third set, they certainly put together their best effort there, but just kind of ran out of time after a couple of tough sets early on. Juniata felt like a, a powerhouse. Padolin and Coley both had 12 kills, 11 for Kennedy Christie, who I just don't think got enough uh, appreciation for the way she played tonight. She was unbelievable. Audrey Muth, nine kills, no errors tonight. 409 hit percentage. As a team, they hit 318. Four points for Courtney Williams, three for Olivia Foley, and one for Rousset Hernandez. Foley had 41 assists. Rousset Hernandez had six. There were five aces, including three from all, two from Christie. 67 total digs for Juniata. 19 for all to lead the way. 15 for Rousset Hernandez. Walker and Christie both in double figures there as well. Juniata sided out at 56% in the final set after 83% in that landslide second set. So, we have reached uh, the end of the season. And while tonight's national championship match only went three sets, and it was one of only two three-set matches here this week, I want to take a second to say thank you to the folks at St. Vincent College and at Sport Pittsburgh, who are our hosts, and certainly to Duquesne University uh, for a, a great national championship week. It was a special week here for all of the teams, and certainly for Juniata and their fans here tonight. Any final thoughts, Laura? This has been a heck of a week. It has been a wonderful tournament and so, so much great, uh, exciting games. And both of these teams did put on just a wonderful performance this evening and great group of women and look forward to seeing them achieve things outside of the volleyball court. Trinity, for the second time in program history, finishes second in the country. Out of 414 teams, there is nothing wrong with finishing second place. Quite well done to the Tigers as we turn our attention to the Juniata Eagles, where we're going to have our individual and team trophy presentation coming up here, and we'll let you watch it as it streams live on NCAA.com. Big thank you to our entire production crew for a great week. Lots of great matches here at Duquesne, and Certainly appreciate everybody's effort for our producer, David Harris, director, Alan Hughes, and our entire crew, and for Laura Benton. I'm Brendan Gulick. So long from UPMC Cooper Fieldhouse. Stay tuned for the trophy presentation for the third time in program history and for the first time since 2006, the Juniata Eagles national champions.
Jackie Bryant. <laughs> Emma Pinkston. <laughs> Emily Sullivan. <laughs> Alex Rival. <laughs> Jackie Bryant. Associate Head Coach, Casey Taylor. Yeah. Associate Coach, Ashley Holt. Thank you.